the Waken Sands. My dearest friends, praise be unto the Twelve for delivering you from the clutches of treachery. Father! Pepin, my son, and Master Papashan besides. Forgive me, Father. I should have been at Her Grace's side. Save your tears. The Sultana yet lives. You. It was I who arranged this gathering. And judging by your perplexed expressions, it would seem introductions are in order. I am Dulala, head of the Order of Noldthor, and member of the Syndicate. What you said about the Sultana, is it true? Is she alive? Young lady, I understand you were with the Sultana when she drank from the poisoned goblet and collapsed. Would I be correct in assuming that you did not personally verify Her Grace's vital signs? Why ask when she's playing? You know the answer. Calm yourself, General, and let me finish. The truth is not as you imagine it. You are all victims of a most ingenious ruse. A ruse conceived to eliminate the threat posed by Teleji Adeleji. Tis my belief that Teleji plotted the Sultana's assassination alone, but that Lollarito caught wind of his plot and exploited it to his own ends. He sought to manipulate you into eliminating Telechi for him, and you duly obliged. At one fell swoop, he removed his two foremost rivals, all the while remaining above suspicion. God strike me down for a fool. But the Sultana, how can it be that she lives? She lives because Lollarito willed it. Her own lady-in-waiting is but one of his many little birds. By her sleight of hand, the poison was switched for a less deadly draught before it could reach her mistress's lips. Some manner of sedative, perchance, of a potency sufficient to induce a slumber like unto death. Were I to guess, I would say Her Grace is being held somewhere, dreaming dreams of a brighter Uldar, even as we speak. Oh, none more. I will never forgive Lolorito for his part in this. Though Lolorito's hands are far from clean, they did pluck her grace from the jaws of death. That must count for something. And though one may call the man's methods into question, it cannot be denied that he knows the value of stability. 
to the very gill, like as not. He craves power, tis true, but he has no desire to depose the Sultana. I had never taken sides in your feud with the monetarists, but it was not for want of concern for our nation's welfare. Indeed, t'was out of the desire to see order restored that I furnished your Far Eastern friends with information and arranged this gathering. I hope you are ready to work, General, for there is much work to be done. Our first priority must be to bring matters back into balance. Lest you forget Her Grace's words, the true wealth of Uldar lies in the health, happiness, and hopes of her people. As for the more worldly kind of wealth, I am content to let Lolorito help himself to whatever Teleggi Adeleggi left behind. You, meanwhile, must do that which you alone can do. Rescue her grace and take your place at her side once more, for her sake and that of our nation. Alpha node. I had no, not counted on Poris Dula Dvala herself appearing. In my defence, my suspicions regarding the Sultan's, Sultana is proved more prescient. Much remains to be done, but in rescuing Robban, we have taken a vital step towards resolving matters in order. We couldn't have done it without you, Violet. Thank you. Ring of fending, slaying, aiming, healing. To siege or not to siege? Alpha is distracted by the core on his limb pearl. Room? Yes, General Ban is now safe in hand. Safe in hands. What? Another assault? Very well. We shall return at once. Pray never the account of our coming. And in Zin Sin, we face another crisis. The Dravanians are preparing to resume their siege on the Holy See. Though I am loath to abandon the Sultana in her fate, we lack the necessary evidence to act upon Dravana's claims. That being the case, I propose that we leave Marshal Turpin and the others to investigate. Return with all haste to Ishgard. Ah, there you are. Sorry for the cutting your reunion with General Roman short. I wouldn't have bothered you, but the city awash with rumours of another Adrian attack, and Lord Hotchafon Lord is desperate to get hold of you. Speaking of whom, he and the others are waiting for you inside, so you better head in. My friends, thank you for answering our call in such altasi. As I am sure you are aware, the Dvalans are more gathering to war. Mr. Safmoon, Master Radivier, and Master Palanchinus for up up the summons, but we have thought it best to have Master Tari contact, contact you by 
most direct means available. When the observation bells toll, it is warning that cannot be ignored. The Holy See has ordered that we must be ready for battle. In case you haven't heard, a band of trappers retur returning from the west claim they saw a clad of dragons big enough to dim the midday sky. Natox minions gather once more for war. But I would not have you take up arms in another of our of our conflicts. When first you came to Ishgard, I offered you protection. If I cannot assure your safety here, I cannot well accept your aid, much as less ask for it. Signs of the Seven Dawn, you are faced with a choice to remain in a Besiege Ishgard or seek sanctuary elsewhere. I will not have pers I will not presume to influence your decision, but I must ask that you make it swiftly, lest our enemies force your hand. Though we flee to the ends of the world, it would seem that no place in this troubled age is free of strife. Once more the horde descends upon Ishgard, and once more weary defenders must take up a spur and bow. The Count would have us seek shelter, shelter from the storm, but I, for one, grow tired of running. If we are to shine the light of dawn, we must do so in the sight of our fellow man, not hearken in a hole. What say you, Violet? Then fight we shall. Let us never be said that we abandon our allies in their hour of need. Alphanode's way. Alphanode's deliberation had best to proceed. The choice we make today may have a grave implications into our, for our order. It would only write that Atartu would have, have a say. Come, let us all meet outside and discuss the path that lies before us. Okay, let's go outside. Ishgard cannot well endure another assault. Even should her knights succeed in turning back the Horde, the casualties will be catastrophic. But what other choice do we have? It's not like we can talk it over with them. Dragons and men aren't exactly on speaking terms. With certain notable exceptions. You don't mean Iceheart? When last you spoke with her, she lamented her crimes, did she not? Then there remains a sliver of hope. If we can persuade Iceheart to act as our intermediary, we may yet be able to convince Nidhogg to abandon his bloody course. If there is to be a meeting, I would accompany you. Estinian. Even with your intermediary, Nidhogg's blood rage may render him deaf to reason. However, the mere attempt may afford our forces precious time to prepare. Of course, you might also consider a more direct approach to ending this conflict. With the power of the eye at my disposal, and the vaunted strength of the Warrior of Light, we could conceivably slay the beast outright. If we are to risk a face-to-face -face meeting with the Dread Worm, I, for one, would feel safer in the company of the Azure Dragoon. However, I should only turn to your lance if my words failed to find their mark. Is that clear? Perfectly. I shall assume that Isart enjoys similar diplomatic protection until instructed otherwise. A word of advice. Think carefully before divulging the particulars of this plan to Sir Emmerich. It would not do to have the Lord Commander accused of consorting with heretics. Indeed. I thank you for your counsel, Estinian. We shall be honored to have you with us. 
I am glad to be of service. We have chosen a difficult road. Chosen a difficult road. Yet even should we succeed in winning as our, to our cause, our plans to parley with Swift swiftly come to naught should the Holy See decide to strike first against the Horde. We must petition the Lord Commander's aid ere we set forth. I hope only hope that Sermon will on, will be willing to muzzle Ishgard's forces on the strength of our vague assur assurances. Itarto, I would ask that you remain in Fortum's manner and inform the Count of our decision. Tell him that the signs of the Sun Dawn mean to do all in their powers power to ensure that Ishgard and her people will survive. Yes, sir. Would you speak with the Lord Commander? Pray make it quick. I want the defences of the Outer Ward rechecked. See to it that the ballistas are in good repair and supplied with enough ammunition for a prolonged siege. At once, my lord. Would seem I have visitors, and unlike those messing beyond our walls, these ones are welcome. Pray forgive us for interrupting you in the midst of your preparations, Sir Emmerich, but our suit concerns the impending assault. To speak plain, we believe there is a chance the invasion might be halted before it even begins. I can divulge a little more at this time, but I must nevertheless request that you advise the Holy See to refrain from launching any preemptive sorties whilst we seek to put our plans in motion. I will gladly lend my support to any endeavor that could spare the blood of my countrymen, but I would know more of the cause you would have me champion. Will you not share aught of this mysterious undertaking? Know that I have offered my lance to aid in this endeavor. I cannot claim that its success is assured, but our actions should serve to delay Nidhogg's advance at the very least. Which is more than can be said for the ill-conceived counter-attack advocated by the sea's more vocal crusaders. They offer glorious death, but little hope of victory. Aye, their proposal does not inspire confidence. Our resources should rightly be spent shoring up the city's defenses. Hmm. The Azure Dragoon and the Warrior of Light sallying forth together to face the Dreadworm Nidhogg. I must admit, the mere thought of it does much to dispel my misgivings. Go then. Carry out your plan. I shall do what I can for you within the Holy Sea. Having secured Sir Emic's support, we must proceed without fear of a relentless Ishgardian attack, which is not to say that we can afford to be fair. History tells us that the Javanians will attack as soon as the Horde reaches a critical size. Before that happens, we must reach track needs to track down and win over late the Ice Hearts and then locate the par and parallel with Nitok. In short, time is against us. If you are ready, Eastinian, let us be about our task.
such commotion. Yes, Your Eminence. The bells of the Observatorium warn of our enemy's approach. So, the dragons are coming. Let them come, in their hundreds and their thousands. With the Divine Blade in our hands, we shall rend their flesh and drown the heretics in their master's blood. Even Nidhogg and his foul brood shall be powerless to resist us. And when we have rid the world of their pestilence, we shall turn our attention to our Asian allies. See that they are suitably rewarded for their invaluable assistance. If I may, Your Eminence, the Paragons wield powers strange and unknowable. Can we be certain that they will not see through our deception? We can be certain of naught save the righteousness of our cause. If you would be a true leader of men, you must possess conviction as well as caution. We seek to excise the root of an evil that has blighted us for a thousand years. The risk is worth the reward. And what of Estinian and this warrior of light? They have plans of their own. Leave them to their purpose. We must each play the role we have been given. You and your chosen brothers most of all. For the glory of King Thordon.